This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. For me, every time that I'm coming to give a lecture, to speak, so it's a war. And I'll tell you why. Because uh, Because every one of you carry his own Yetzirah, his evil inclination, and brings him with him to to where that I'm to the to the to the war. And now I need to fight <laughs> with all of those dark angels that you holy souls are bringing with you. But no worries, I'm a good fighter. I'm a, I'm a rebel, I'm a warrior, I'm not afraid, it's okay. And I have a worse problem than that, is that this silly device is bringing thousands of, of dark uh, forces with him as well. And I'm carrying him in my pocket all day long. But from that we can learn how powerful we are. Because you're all going to admit in 45 minutes or something like that, that we won the war and that we overpowered your evil inclination. The main question is what's going to be with mine, but that's a different story. Who's going to help me with mine? But I leave it to the end. Every person in this universe, and I'm not talking only about Jewish, people, I'm not talking about religious people, I'm talking about every soul in this universe, every person in this universe got such an enormous power, such an amazing, amazing set of tools, weapons, and secret powers that he can use in the battle against the evil inclination, against the Yetzirah. Now, someone put those flowers here. Mm -hmm. Can someone take them also? <laughs> No? No one can take them? Thank you! Thank you for taking the flowers. I'm just a guest too. Thank you. Now I'm going to tell you something that will give you a lot of strength and power for your own war. And I promise you that you will see wonders and miracles if you're going to follow that simple advice. The Yetzirara, the snake, the Satan, the devil, the evil inclination, the power of imagination, the darkness, is tricking everyone in the same way. It's trying for every moment and moment of your life to make you feel bad with who that you are, and to try to convince you that you are wrong, and that you're bad, and that you're not going to make it, and that you're a loser, and that Hashem, the Creator, He doesn't love you, and He doesn't listen to your prayers. And that's His main trick. Lying to you and destroying your self-esteem and your belief system, crushing you, demolishing your happiness and your confidence, just break you down to pieces, depressing you, confusing you, making you lose your faith in yourself, and then he can win. Why only then? Why can't he kill you? Why can't he shoot you? Because the Yetzirah really does not have no power of effect on your life except of in your thoughts. He cannot touch your life with a finger. He cannot damage you. If something happened to you, it's not the Yetzirah did that thing to you. 
Yetzirah doesn't have no permission. His kingship, his authority is limited to his place. And your kingship is a different kingship. And one kingship cannot touch the other, even in a breath of a hair, even not with the smallest finger. You are an individual, independent individual, that is connected from within, from inside, through your soul to the Creator. And no one in this world can touch you except of yourself. Only you inside of your zone can cause a lot of damage. That is clear. And when that evil inclination, the Yetzirah is coming and offering you certain offers and confusing you and suggesting and scaring you and giving you more and more thoughts, foreign thoughts and claiming to have evidence for his assumptions and his ways. So by that, he is shaking the stability of your faith system in yourself your self-esteem, and you're doubting yourself and questioning your deep understanding, and then you give up on your own dreams, and you start destroying your own self, and ruining your own life with your hands. And the Yetzirah is sitting from the side and laughing at you. Look, I tricked him. So the main thing that we need to do is to learn how to listen to ourselves and to ignore all negative thoughts. Because all sad and negative and angry thoughts are the thoughts that are coming from that dark side, from the side of the evil <coughs> inclination. And positive thoughts, thoughts of hope, thoughts that are bringing you to joy, to get stronger, to increase your will and your holy desire to succeed and to grow and to develop. Those are the thoughts that are coming from Hashem, from the Creator, by the hand of the righteous people, by the holy messengers that are delivering that positive light of the Creator into our souls, through our mind, through our senses, through our heart through the positive thoughts that are crossing our mind. And now if you have a doubt, if you're standing in an intersection and you need to choose, the Creator is telling you, you should choose life. And what is life? What that life means to you? What that will revive you? What that will give you the strength and the power to make another step and to live another day and to smile to another person? and to be positive, and to be grateful, and to add more good power, more good actions to your life. To work on yourself a little bit more, to reveal another part of your personality that you were not aware to yet, and to express your heart, your feelings, and your emotions, to be who that you are. To be that holy child that you were 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. To come back to who that you are. The Zohar Kadosh, the holy book that's been written by Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and his students. is saying that Tshuva, the concept of Tshuva, to come back to Hashem, it's to come back to that place that you started your, your, your life from. You need to come back to your earliest days. To who that you are in your roots. To your own source, to come back to yourself, that is the process of tshuva. Because you are a holy soul. But that holy soul fell to the exile, fell to the swamps of darkness, of filth, of despair, of sadness, of low self-esteem, of criticism, of filthy words and negativity that pushed you down not to believe in the Creator, not to believe in yourself. That your faith in the Creator is real. And now you're questioning your faith in the Creator. And the Yetzirah is coming in every opportunity, in every minute, in every option that He has. He's coming and piling His thoughts and His negativity and His lies. And He's not afraid to lie. And He couldn't care less to insult you and to break your spirit and to destroy you and to abuse you like you know. 
And he's doing it with his gentle and relaxed voice and destroying your soul, breaking your happiness, making you miserable and laughing on that. And he's not doing it only to you. He's doing it to all of your friends, to all of your family, to all of your beloved ones, to one nation, to all the nations together. Raping and beating and murdering and chasing and slavering and, and, and any horrible word that exists cannot describe the pain and the sorrow of the lost souls that lost their identity that wakes up in the morning and can't look at their own face in the mirror, feel bad about themselves, blaming themselves, hating themselves. And that's all a lie. Because if you're going to search and going to look into the depths of your soul to find out who you really are, over there you're going to see a holy soul, a holy angel, an angel of God. A divine spirit, a divine soul. A holy soul that her source coming only from heaven. That's who that you are. And you know that. Deep, deep inside of you, the Creator has a place. And He lives inside of you like the, the verse is saying. Asuli mishkan veshachanti betocham. Asuli mikdash veshachanti betocham. Build the temple and I'm going to live inside of you. And we built the temple. We built the first one and the second one. And before of that we built the Mishkan. And the Mishkan had the power of Beit HaMikdash, of the Temple. It was equal in its holiness. And since that moment that we sacrificed, that we gave out from our gold, from our silver, from our money, from our time, the women that took out all their earrings and their necklaces and their rings and the men, they were working in the Mishkan. And everything that we sacrificed in that generation bought for us, for the future generations, the merit that the Creator will walk in the camp with us. Where? Inside your soul. <coughs> Inside of my nation I'm sitting, the Creator is telling us. You have a divine soul, a holy soul. A holy soul that is part of heaven. <laughs> part of God from above. That's who you are. And you need to understand it. You must start believing yourself. You need to believe in yourself. You need to take yourself in your own hands and to build yourself and to fight against your despair, against your evil inclination, against those negative thoughts of despair. You don't have a chance. Why not? You're not going to make it. Why not? You failed so many times before. So what? The evil inclination, the snake from the first generation, he's coming and talking bad words, bad tongue, bad words. He's drilling and destroying and, and lying to us from the first day. And the snake, he's got two tips to his tongue because he's always opening two options for you, confusing you, that you're not going to know where to go, to the right, to the left, to do this, not to do that, to open, to close, to start, to finish, what to do. And every person that tries to upgrade his life, and to come even to higher places and try to serve Hashem. And he wants to dedicate his life to the Torah. So the Yetzirah is fighting with him in the worst way of them all. And putting more effort on him and destroying him. And people that are waking up to understand the power of prayer. The evil inclination making their life even worse. That they won't open their mouths. Because he knows that when you... Gonna take off your jacket. No one can stop you. And that's it. So you need to take off your jacket. You just need to fight. You need to decide. I'm fighting for my people. I'm fighting for my nation. I'm fighting for the truth. And even if you want to fight for yourself, fight for yourself. And don't back off ever. Because you have a purpose in life. To save your own life, to tell the story of your life, to write the book, the novel of your life, to say the truth, to fight for justice,
to protect the weak, to save the poor, to fight for those ones that don't have a mouth, that they don't dare to speak, that they don't have a voice. You need to fight for them. Because if you not going to fight for them, so it counts like that you caused that problem to them. If you see someone that is abusing someone else and you're sitting quiet, you are a criminal. You're a wicked, weak person that is allowing evil people to destroy the righteous and the good and the poor and the weak. And we're not allowed to do that. We must refuse and to fight for our people, for the truth, for justice. And even if we're going to fight until we're going to die, it's worth it to die as a hero than to live all your life as a coward. And the war that is called Milchemet Ayetzel, the war against the evil inclination, is a 24 hours a day war in your thoughts, in your mind. Not to fall to no kind of despair, of sadness, never to give up. When you see that you're about to be angry, now someone is about to make a joke on your account. When you're gonna laugh, the Yetzirah, when you're gonna be angry, the Yetzirah is gonna laugh about you. Now you're about to be sad, to give up, to quit. The Yetzirah is preparing a new celebration on your account. When you're crying, he's laughing. That's why you need to upset yourself on him. Le'olam yargiz adam yetzer tov al yetzer ara. Gonna upset the good inclination to be angry at your evil inclination. That's your job. To be upset on the fact that you gave up to that snake. To that pathetic damned snake that is depressing you. And ruin the sweetness of your life. You can have sweet life. People that are dreaming, I'm going to get married and then I'm going to be happy. Nonsense. I'm going to have children, then I'm going to be happy. Nonsense. I'm going to have money, then I'm going to be happy. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. If you're not going to work on your happiness, you will never going to be a happy person with a wife with 10 children, with $1 billion in your bank account, you will not be a happy person. You will be terrified and stressed and angry and suspicious and doesn't know what to do and your workers and your family and you're going to say it's not, gonna, it's not worth it. Why am I doing all of that? And for who? And for what? Because you don't have yourself to be happy with. You cannot be happy with your wife if you're not a happy person. You cannot be happy with your husband if you're not a happy person. You cannot be happy with your children if you're not a happy person. You cannot be happy with your wealth, with your money, with your properties if you're not a happy person. To work on yourself it's to fight against all kinds of negativity. Every time that a negative thought is penetrating to your zone, you need to understand that someone is standing from the side and tricking you. He's pushing you now to that pit, to that hole. It's a scam. If you're about to be angry, someone is laughing at you right now. If you're about to be sad and depressed, if you're about to give up on your dreams, on your goals, it means that someone is laughing at you from the side and waits that you're going to give up because he cannot cancel your success. Only you can ruin your life with your own bare hands. So you need to fight on the fact that there is no despair in the world at all and that prayers are being answered. And you need to stand like a machine, like a crazy soldier and to fight and to fight and to fight and not to back off till the last moment of your life and to go out from this world as a hero, as a warrior that fought for justice, that was kind and generous and nice and positive and supportive and loving and caring. 
That's who you can be because that's who you really are. That's who you really want to be. That's your real vision and your real dream to be a good, holy, righteous person. That's who you are inside. Admit it. Look into your own eyes. Rak be'enecha tabit. Stare into your own eyes. Look at yourself. And then you're going to see the evil people paying on their sins, on their crimes. If you're going to look at them, oh, look at him, criticizing him, destroying him. The ones that you're destroying are your beloved ones. You're destroying yourself. When you're blaming someone else, I'm asking you. When you're angry at him, you looked at him and he's so lazy. Really, I'm asking you, why are you upset? Why you care so much about his laziness? Yes, he is so lazy. Why is it annoying you? Let him be lazy. He can be lazy. Why is it affecting you? The truth. You think that you're losing money because of him? You think that you need to work harder because of him? That's a lie. You're not dealing with the truth. The truth is that you don't have faith that the Creator will supply the Parnasa, the money. And now that person is a good, good opportunity for you to drop your responsibility and not to deal with your own reality, the one that you know and terrified from dealing with, and you rather to blame it all on him and to fight with him. But the truth is that your real enemy is yourself and his laziness is only waking you up to deal with your fears and you don't want that. So you rather to destroy him and to kill him instead of standing in front of the mirror and to tell yourself, I'm a failure. I don't know how to make money. I don't know how to have Shalom Bait. I don't know how to raise my children. I don't know how to make Aliyah. I don't know how to learn Torah. Instead of doing that, you're blaming your wife, your children, your friends, your rabbis, your chavrutot, your friends, your company, whatever the, the, the Trump. Whatever. It's easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. Because the Yetzer Ara, he wants you to feel that it's easy. And by that, he's destroying your life. But if you're going to say to yourself, I'm not looking for easy life. I want to work. I want to work on myself. That I will be happy no matter what. That I will be strong no matter what. That I will be positive and supportive and caring and loving no matter what. You're going to become that one. And you're going to find yourself standing in tests that people around you can never even dream of having that power. And you're going to find yourself protecting others and supplying tools and vessels and wisdom and good advice to weak people that are around you that are seeking for advice and they're going to learn from you only if you're going to buy that life experience from your own wars. If you're not going to back off on that real inner fight with your evil inclination, with your fears, with your fears that are telling you lies about yourself that you're not able and that you're weak. How can you be weak if you have the Creator on your side. Now you can say, I'm not sure that the Creator is on my side. So that's great. What in the world are you doing in a synagogue if you don't think that the Creator is on your side? Why are you covering your head? Why are you keeping Shabbat? Why are you eating kosher? If you don't know that the Creator lives inside of you, so why are you acting so silly? Keeping a tradition of an ancient nation you can choose any other nation and to follow their tradition. If you don't have a solid faith in Hashem Eloke Israel that He is the King, so what in the world are you doing acting religious? Acting religious will not going to bring you to the purpose of your life and to the success of your life and to find your true self and to accomplish completion in your life. To be religious will not going to bring you to the salvation. I can take you, even here in LA, I can show you thousands of religious people that are lost in darkness, don't have a clue what to do with their lives. Religion is not the answer and the solution for your problem. Like we said before, 
Only after you're going to defeat the evil inclination, the snake that lives inside of you, only then you will be a free person. Only then, only then, one moment before you're going to destroy him, take his head off completely and he's dead, done, finished, you still have an enemy. You still need to be worried. You still need to fight. You need always to be sober and open with your eyes open and, and, and fill with your hands and check your own pulse and check yourself and do tshuva and calculating your moves and always to be aware and awake. And if you're not going to do that, you're going to lose the war. So every person needs to win that war and the war is an inner war. The war is not a war against the world. The world cannot touch you. Because if they just fired you from your old job, there is no problem because you don't know the opportunity that is waiting for you to be worried about losing your job. It's only to be afraid of the lack of confidence that you have in the Creator. If you will know that Father in Heaven is your Father as well, and not only the Father of the bookcase or those ancient people from the past, the biblical figures, no. He is your God, He is your father and your mother and your mentor and your rabbi and your best friend. He is your husband and your wife, He is your children, He is your life, He is the life itself. If you don't have Him in your life, you are losing. You are losing the game, you are losing every round, you are losing in every situation. You keep on losing and losing and in the end you are losing track of how much you lost. Because the main thing that you lost is your identity. You lost yourself. So even if you're going to get married 24 hours every day, you're going to pretend to be a good husband, a good wife. No, I'm trying, yes. No, I'm doing, yes. And you're lying. Because you're just doing it out of fear. You don't want to be divorced. You don't want to be screamed at. And you're lying. You don't really have Shlom Bayit because you're not really there. Because you're doing everything that she won't scream at you. You're doing everything that he won't cheat on you. That's not the righteous way. That's not the path of truth. The path of truth is to be loyal because you're a loyal person. It's to be kind because you're a kind person. It's to be nice because you're a nice person. Not because you're afraid that your head will be take off, taken off. Only because that you really love. Only because that you really want to do. Not because you're afraid not to do. When you're working out of your fears, even if you think, you dream to yourself that your causes are so noble and the reasons that you're doing is so important. I'm doing it for my children. I'm doing it for my... I don't know what. It's nonsense. You're lying to yourself. You're a terrified kid that is not dealing with reality. If you don't love your mate, if you don't love your wife, you don't love your husband, if you don't really feel the love, not the fear from losing them, the love, the will that they will succeed, the desire to see them growing and being happy in their lives, if you don't have that inside of you, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself, don't do that to them, don't lie to your family for years and years. And if you're finding yourself that you are, that you're lying to yourself for years, it's not the reason to give up, to say, okay, so if I'm not able, so I'm not qualified, so I'm going to give up. No! Take yourself seriously and start working on your attributes, on your midot. Work on your behavior, work on your manners, work on your self-esteem, work on your nature. Break your sadness and your laziness and your despair. And start walking to a better life. To be positive, to have faith. But now you will say, but I'm scared, but I'm afraid, but I don't know what to do. Great, there is a solution. We are talking about people that believe in the Creator, in the Master of the Universe. You can always pray. You can always call Him. But the Yetzirah is shutting our mouths. No, 
Your prayers are never been accepted. No one is listening to you. Who are you that your prayers will be accepted? You're not keeping Shabbos. You're filthing your mouth. You're not guarding your eyes. You didn't read Tikkun Aklali. You haven't went to Mikveh. You're not putting Tfilin. So what? That's a lie. There is no connection. If I don't own a property, it doesn't mean that I cannot have lunch. What's the connection? If I'm not keeping Shabbat, so it means I cannot go to a kosher restaurant and pay for a steak? What's the connection between the two? Now let's say that I disappointed the Creator. Okay, no. You're not keeping Shabbos? That's nonsense. You know what I've done? I cheated and I lied and every day I'm stealing and I'm doing horrible things and behind the back and I'm not ashamed and I did this and I did that and I'm the worst one of them all. Okay, yes, let's say so, okay? You are the worst one of them all. Okay, we agreed. Everyone are now crying with you. Let's stand one minute quiet. Dakadumia to respect your humility, that you're the worst one of them all. You are the worst, okay? Great. Now, I'm asking you, do you believe in Hashem? If your answer is no, there is nothing to talk about. Okay, you're lost. But, if you still have faith in Hashem, if inside of you, you think to yourself that there is a Creator, so I'm asking you, who is He? Who is He? In who you believe? In the Father of mercy? In the Father, in the Creator, in the one that brought life? In the one that created the worlds? In the one that is watering the flowers? In the one that is feeding the squirrels and the porcupines in the desert and in the forest? In the one that created the deers and all kinds of fish in the sea? In the one that is helping the view to look so gorgeous and the sunsets and sunrise and clouds and thunders and rainbows. Are you talking about Him? Is He the one that you believe in? Yeah, yeah, you're the worst. We agree. You're the worst. But someone created you, right? Someone revealed His kindness on you and gave you a place in His universe. Someone brought you down to earth and is feeding you for years, allowing you to breathe for years, supplying your needs, showing you movies, feeding you snacks and chocolates, watering you with alcohol, puffing drugs to your brain, whatever you need, He's doing for you. Everything you asked for until today, He gave you. The worst things of them all, He supplied to you. Everything you wanted, He gave you. Now I'm asking you, as the worst ones of them all, can't you call that Creator and ask Him, why in the world you created me? I'm the worst. I'm the lowest. Why did you create me? For what? Don't I have a purpose? My life don't mean anything. Who am I? Why did you create me? For what? For which cause? When you're going to open that conversation as the worst person in the universe, the wonders and the miracles that you will experience in your life will be above the ability of a person to praise and describe in a lifetime. You won't be able to stop thanking the Creator for revealing His loving kindness on you, even on the tiniest things of them all, even on the fact that one time in your life you were able to eat bread and to digest bread, to be part of the godly system of the universe, even without doing anything, being a plant, being a flower, you will be so grateful to take a part, to have a role in the creation, the gratitude that you will feel will fill you from within and you will glow and shine just from the fact that the Creator helped you to realize that He exists even if you and Him are separated in million years of light. 
Just the fact that you know of his existence, it's the biggest gift of them all and no person in the world can thank the Creator even on that. That you know that he is exist. That you know that he created you. Because by knowing that, you created for yourself a share in the world to come. You're about to experience eternal life in the world to come, in the future to come. In every moment that you believed in the Creator in your life, you attached yourself to Him. And when you attached yourself to infinity, you created an endless connection with Him. And He is good and He is above time. So it means that after that all the masks and coverings and curtains and the power of imagination of this fake world will break down and melt and disappear, what that you will left with is your reward, is your pleasure and satisfaction that is just about to grow and expand in the world to come in an eternal way. And you're going to enjoy the closeness to the Creator in ways that cannot be described in words because words are limited to letters and sizes and measures. And the bounty and the grace and the kindness of the Creator is above the word light, is above the word good. There are no words that can describe the goodness of the Creator, the greatness of the Creator. And the smallest, tiniest attachment that you had to Him seven years ago, 70 years ago, one moment of your life, one second you thought about Him, that is already letting you to have an eternal connection with Him for good. And this is something that every person can feel also in this world when he is focusing in his inside, in his soul. Some people can do that through learning Torah. Some people can do it through prayer. Some people can do it while dancing. Some people can do it only while taking hard drugs. Okay? But there are people that been in that place and they're telling us about their experience and we had our own experiences and we know that that place that is above the place that is beyond this world is exist and that the Creator is alive and that the Creator lives inside His creation and we know when we look at the nature, when we hear music, when we eat, when we smell, when we drink, when we're happy, when we're learning Torah, when we're doing something positive with our life, when we're succeeding, when we're breathing, in that moment we're attaching ourselves to the good, to the King of all kings. And every one of us, based on those life experiences, is convincing himself to continue and to make another, another step toward the Creator and not to back off on his <laughs> dreams. Because after you taste something, so you left with the good taste in your memory and you say, I want to experience that again. I want to go to that place again. It was fascinating, it was great, it was awesome, it was amazing. I want that thing again. And because of good life experiences, we still have hope for the future. So every one of us just need to have his own time to focus in his own memories, in his own life wisdom and wisdom that comes from life experience. And to check how much good you felt until today. How many moments of clarity you had until today. How many deep thoughts and awesome, amazing understandings you had until today. 
And based on those positive moments, you need to take a strong decision and to decide for yourself that you're not going to stop searching for the truth ever. That you're not going to give up on your own dreams ever. The one that gives you those dreams is the one that is willing to fulfill them. Is that one that wants to answer to all of your prayers? Is the same one that let you dream at night? Going to give you the tools and the powers to execute them tomorrow morning. To find them in your house, knocking at your door. He is the one, just you need to call Him. You need to call Him not because He is willing to receive your honor. He doesn't need our prayers. When you give a gift to your child, you want Him to say thank you, not because you need His thanks. Those words doesn't mean anything to you. Oh, thank you. Okay, nothing, nonsense, who cares? I just want to see you happy. But you know... That if he won't appreciate those gifts that you just gave him, he will lose those gifts. If he will not gonna buy those tools, those, those foundations of character, if he will not gonna build himself to be a person of truth, with appreciation, with gratitude, with honor, with respect, he will lose everything in his life. He can lose his children, he can lose his wife, he can lose his business, he can lose things like you know that you lost because you were not appreciating enough, because you were not thanking enough, because you were not thinking seriously deep <coughs> enough. So you're trying to warn him. And the Creator, he cares about us in the same way. He knows that the vessels for success are the good midot, are the good manners. And mainly the appreciation, the gratitude. He knows that without that, you're not going to be rewarded. You won't have the ability to contain His bounty. If someone just going to deliver you gold and diamonds to your house every day, if you're just going to take it like it's yours, and you're not going to go and search for the source of those wealth, of those treasures, so who are you? You're a thief. You're pathetic. Just receiving and receiving and wanting more and complaining when it stopped from coming. Who are you? A pathetic person. But if someone did a favor for you and you're going to remember that person for the rest of your life, so you're noble. And if someone did a good thing for you and you will always going to think how and when you will be able to pay him back. Not because he's demanding, just because that you care, because you appreciate. So then you're a righteous person, then you're decent, then you're worthy. And the Creator wants us to be worthy, that we will recognize Him because He is everything. And there is nothing except of Him in His creation. That is Him. This is Him. This is Him. That's Him. That's Him. That's Him. That's Him. That's Him. Everything is Him. Melo kol aretz kevado. His honor means His outfits are filling the universe. There is no place that is lack of His existence. He is filling all the gaps, all the cracks. All the dark spots, He's over there. In the most contaminated places, He's standing and protecting. He's defending our life, He's defending the creation. He's bringing us to the purpose of our existence. He's bringing us to accomplish a munah, to have faith. To believe in Him, it's to be connected to reality. It's to hold the truth not as a flag, not to wave and to be proud. Oh yeah, I'm religious. Oh yeah, I'm a Jew. Nonsense. It doesn't worth anything. Those words doesn't mean anything. A friend of mine, a student of mine, a person that is a non-Jew, he called me a few months ago with a question, a huge question. A rabbi in his synagogue was talking in Shabbos and telling everyone that the non-Jews, they won't be rewarded in the world to come. 
The maximum that they can achieve is to be the slave of the holy nation of the Jewish people. Yeah. Amazing. Let's idolize the Jews right now, okay? One minute to idolize the Jews. We'll all be quiet and idolize the Jews. Nonsense! Nonsense! I asked him. He asked me, Is it the truth, Rav? <coughs> Is it the truth? I don't have anything to wait for except of being a slave in the world to come. That's what I need to wait for. I told him, listen, have you ever heard about Schindler? Have you ever heard about that person named Schindler? In the time of the Holocaust, he was not Jewish. He was Austrian, if I'm not wrong. He was Austrian. He was a businessman. And he made business with the Nazis. And when he had thousands of Jewish slaves working in his factory as part of his deal, making tons of money in the time of war on the back of those poor Jews, he suddenly realized that Jews are human beings. He felt it. He had some kind of merit from heaven. In those days it was very hard to recognize that Jewish are also human. It was very hard. People thought that they were rats. People thought that they were creepy, that they were disgusting, that they were full of diseases, that they were contaminating. People were scared of them. But he realized that we're talking about regular people. Mothers, fathers, children, grandparents, uncles, cousins, human beings. So he started protecting his people, his workers that were making money for him. Tons of money! And in the end of the war, more than 3,000 people testified that their life had been saved only because of him protecting them and not sending them back to the camps for a sure death. So I asked my friend, my student, Now let's say that in the same time there was a Jew, a Jewish Hasidic person. All of his life he was learning Torah. And when his country, when his community started to be sent to the camps, to the stoves, to the fire, to be slaves of that Nazi animal, he had a lot of money and very strong connections. And he sold everything to save his own skin. And he forgot about his family and his wife and his children. And he saved that damn person, saved his own skin. And went and started a new life in Holland, in Sweden, in the Holy Land of Israel, in Measharim. And now he's got an amazing family with 20 children and great grandchildren, but he left all of his family and his community behind because he was too scared to face death and to face the destiny of his people. So I asked him, let's put those two people in front of each other and I'm asking you which reward you would hope to have in the world to come? Of that non-Jew named Schindler or that Hasidic Jew that is sitting and learning Torah in a Beit Knesset in Mea Sharim and waking up Chatzot and going to Mikveh every day? I would say for sure that I would choose the destiny for the world to come of that non-Jew that saved the lives of people because there's no connection to religion when we're facing the truth. When life is testing you to see who you are, life is don't care about the color of your skin and the name of your mother. The Creator, He's looking deep into the roots of your soul, to your heart, to check who you really are. Who are you? Hashem is checking. Now when you don't have money, who are you? Now when that person is cursing you, who are you? Now when someone is telling you to close that book, who are you? Now when you're scared, who are you? 
one now when you are facing death who are you the creator is asking you all of the time who are you so you need to remember who you really are you're not a lawyer you're not a doctor you're not a Jew you're not nonsense you are who that you really are if you're honorable so you're honorable if you care so you care if you're generous so you're generous if you're a happy person you're a happy person if you're positive and supportive and good and kind and nice so that's who you are and if you're negative and lousy if you let your fears take over your real being and you let your fears control and run your life so then that's who that you chose to be and I don't want to be that one I want to burn every bad part of my being I rather to uproot all of those filthy spiritual emotional tumors that are trying to possess me all of my fears all of my angers all of my jealousy and enviance all of my sadnesses and depressions all of my pride and arrogance I want to kill them all they're my enemies and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to destroy them one after the other because they're making me to lose my true self they're making me to be cruel to my wife and my children they're making me not to be an honorable person they're making me to ignore that homeless that poor person that widow or that orphan my fears so I don't want them to control my life so I'm destroying them I'm crushing them one after the other and when I see my friends my sisters, my brothers, you, every single one of you. I care about you exactly like I care about myself. And I want to see you succeeding exactly like that I want to see myself succeeding as well. I don't want to be rich and to hear that you are still poor. I can't stand it. My friends will testify on me that I always cut all of my money to half. All of my money I'm cutting to half. And if I will have more, I will leave to myself exactly what that I need for my living. And I will always going to give the rest for charity. Not because I'm generous, because I'm honest. Because there is no difference between if I'm going to put my head on the pillow tonight or you're going to put your, your head on the pillow tonight. If I'm going to have a house to sleep in and you sleep in the streets, I can't stand it. I hear your cry even if you don't know it. I feel it. And that heart is not something that I born with. It's something that I worked on. It's something that I peeled all the coverings from it. I revealed my real heart. I was battling my cruelty and my selfishness and my pride and my lusts <coughs> and my desires and my fears and I was breaking them to pieces and from between the cracks you see the light and when you break it again there's another crack and you break it again and yes your hands are bleeding and your hands are shaking but in the end you see the light you see the light you see that there is a reward, that there is a purpose for your effort. That there is someone that is enjoying the fruits of your labor. It's your beloved ones. It's your Father in Heaven that is proud of you. Because He knows how hard it is for you. How many battles you're facing. How many wars you're going through in your life. He knows how many traumas you have. He knows how many patterns you need to break. He knows how many people are surrounding you with their fears, terrorizing you and trying to force you under their control. He knows that. And when He sees that you're battling, that you're fighting, and you're fighting for Him, 
So he's helping you to succeed. And he's assisting you. And then your prayers are being answered. And your dreams are coming true. And things that you hope for are taking place in your life. And they're knocking like good news on your door every morning, every day. And you're here on more miracles. And on more wonders. And more people are waking up around you. And you can bring complete redemption to the world based on your own faith. Based on being honest, being truthful, not being a prophet or a righteous man or a scholar or I don't know what. Be honest. Be truthful. Don't lie. Say the truth. Check before you answer. Think before you do. Be who that you really are. Who that you will be proud to be if you will be. Work on yourself to be your true self. To be who that the Creator made you to be. Be aware to the treasures that He treasured inside of you. Every one of you have amazing abilities and powers and qualities. You have an access to the hearts of thousands of people, random people in the streets, that you can smile to them, that you can cheer them up, that you can give them hope, that you can say a good word to give them a purpose and a reason for life. You can save lives of people that are suicidal, that gave up, that are depressed, that hates themselves, that hates their look, that hates their nose, that hates their eyes, that hates their brows. People today can kill themselves because they hate the color of their eyebrows. You can't understand it. Am I lying? Am I lying? Am I exaggerating? People can kill themselves because of their nose. And they can breathe. And they can commit suicide because of their ears. And no, no one can understand it except of them. They can understand it. And if you experience that also in your life, that you were facing the mirror and you hated yourself and you felt like I want to die. I hate myself. I hate that person in front of me. So you can relate yourself to those broken souls that are out there. And today, if you have a little bit more strength, a little bit more power, your mission is not to enjoy that power. Your mission is to take that power and to run back to the streets, to run back to the clubs, to run back to the forest, to the desert, and to save some more people and to make them refugees that will rest a little bit and become soldiers and come and help you again. That is exactly what that I'm doing here with you. I'm making you to be soldiers. That you're going to go and fight in your houses, in your neighborhoods, in your communities for justice. To protect the weak. To save the poor. To reveal the good and the love and honor and respect. Things that people gave up on long time ago. Who? The righteous ones gave up. The rabbis gave up. The leaders, they gave up on us. On me they gave up, I know it. But I didn't give up on myself because He never gave up on me. He never gave up on me. So I found power inside of myself to stand on my truth and not to back off from it. And because that I know that big people, giant people gave up on me. Gave up on the secular people, gave up on the non-Jews, gave up on all other communities except of theirs. And I saw the lie in their eyes. I saw that they were not honest, that they were not pure, even though that they were carrying huge titles and holy names and been respected and received millions to their pockets, filled themselves with lies. On the back of the poor. That's why I took myself out of that filthy place. And threw myself back to the desert. To the exile. 
and walking from town to town, from city to city, knocking on your doors, asking to create an event and to make another class in a house. Yesterday I was giving a class in coffee beans. I don't care. There were 20 people over there that were listening to my words. For me it's worthy. I would fly, I'm flying. From one side of the world to the other. I'm going to drive. I'm driving. From one side of the country to the other. That's what I'm doing. For you. For you. For you. For you. For every one of you. I'm not charging for my classes. I'm not asking for money from people. When I need, when I'm stuck, I have loyal friends. I can ask them to give me a hand. I'm not shy to ask for help. But we're not doing anything for money. We're throwing our lives into the flaming fire of your lusts and desires, to your fears and anxieties, to your stress, to give you an advice, to give you that lifeline, to give you a hand. Because I'm coming from the same place. I'm carrying the same scars and tattoos that you are. I've been to the same parties. I was waking up in the noontime not remembering how I went to sleep. And when the Creator woke me up, I realized that it's His loving kindness, His unconditional love that woke me up and brought me back to life. Not my merit, not the mitzvot that I was keeping because I was not. Only His kindness, His endless love woke me up. So accept of having gratitude and the honesty to know that it's not belongs to me. I don't do anything else in my life. And I'm qualifying you right now to become those soldiers. And you don't need to open channels and to have Facebook Live events. No, you don't. You need to be truthful. You need to check what is your mission. To ask yourselves, what's my mission? Which life can I save? Who are the people that I can give them a hand? Like I said before, the evil inclination got one trick that is working with that trick on all of us. He makes every single one of us feel bad with who that he is and try to make us think that we need to be like someone else. So don't think that you need to be like me. You don't. Like that I am myself, you need to be yourself. You don't need to follow me. You cannot. I'm flying too high. You need to follow your own heart. And when you're going to follow your heart, you'll find happiness. If my prayers will take place in your life, you won't be happy because you're not desiring the same hopes that I have. You have your own hopes. You dream on another house than the house that I'm dreaming of. You're dreaming on another success than the success that I'm dreaming of. My dreams won't make you happy. Only to fulfill your own dreams will make you happy. To find your soulmate, to find your happiness, to understand the things that are needed and required for you. That is what that you need to look for and not to back off from that search. Until the last moment of your life, even if you're wounded and scarred and broken and, 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 and hurt, ignore your fears and your sadness and your depression and fight for the truth and be your true self and then you'll see the face of heaven. Be honest, express your heart and your emotions and your feelings and be who that you are. Sing and write and illustrate and paint and run and do sports. You want to learn Torah? Learn Torah. I don't mind. Do whatever you want with your life. Be good. Express your good. There are people that are not able to learn Torah. Their mind cannot focus on verses and lines. They cannot read. They cannot. They're so confused and so lost and so OCD that they cannot see it for a second. Can you blame them? No. 
you can blame their teacher it's reality be who that you are make one step at a time read one line write one song have one decent conversation say thank you say I'm sorry make one phone call to apologize give one dime for charity do something useful with your time come back to who that you are and you will see wonders you'll find the true happiness of your existence by being who that God made you to be he created you with your face with your color with your eyes with your religion with your name and with your family name he made you precisely like that he thought with his holy thoughts that it will be the best way to express his wisdom and his <coughs> greatness in the world and he made you to be the best one the one that he thought of that he wanted you to be so be that one that he made you to be and you will see that your qualities and that your power and that your talents that are hidden inside of you can save lives of millions of people can bring complete redemption to the wide world you don't need to be a Jew or Hasid or a genius or wealthy or married or to have children. You need to be connected to your soul. You need to be who that you are. And you can already bring down miracles and wonders to the world. I bless you from the bottom of my heart that all of your prayers and requests will be answered immediately. Before you're going to call him, he's going to answer to all of your holy desires. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Haven't I promised you that? I promised you that. That after 45 minutes, your Yetzara will be finished. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.